Hey, yo, what is up, everybody? Coach Chad here, the CEO of the Next Level Coaching Academy. And I got an exciting podcast slash YouTube video for you guys. One of our awesome clients, Camden, was gracious enough to invite me on his podcast. And we had an amazing conversation about achievement, mindset, overcoming fear and doubt, and just life in general. So if any of those topics excite you, if you feel like you need more advice in any of those topics, then this episode is for you. All right, I'll, I'll stop my blabber mouth and we'll get right into it. See you guys on the other side. Peace. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Fit Life for Busy Parents podcast. My name is Coach Cam, the CEO of Title Training and the host of Fit Life for Busy Parents podcast. We are bringing in my man, Chad Molyneux, the man who needs no introduction, but I'll give it to you guys anyways. He's the CEO of Next Level Coaching Academy, and he's also the host of his own podcast, the Fit CEO podcast. Chad, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. I definitely need an introduction. I only have 8,000 followers on Instagram. So please give me all the introduction. <laughs> all right. I got you. Well, hopefully that was a good one for you to feel confident about it going into this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready to rock. All right, man. Well, I mean, I really do appreciate your time. I know that you have a ton on your plate as being an entrepreneur and doing so many things within the online fitness space. The question I kind of wanted to start off with you just to kind of give everybody a little bit of a background is when exactly did you start doing online coaching and what was the fitness space even like back then online? Yeah, uh, I started in 2015. I really uh, didn't know what I was doing at all. Uh, for about two and a half years, I was trying to figure it out on my own. And I'm sure we'll dig deeper into that as the podcast goes on. But uh, long story short, I couldn't figure it out on my own. So I invested in a mentor and that's where things really started picking up for me. But uh, the online space back then was less about at least from my perspective it was less about coaching and more about being an influencer uh i was really first inspired by uh christian guzman who my girlfriend introduced me to uh not in person but at least his youtube videos uh when i was at the age of 19 and i was an in-person trainer at the time and when she first introduced me to these videos i was actually pretty apprehensive to it i was like how is this guy driving a Lamborghini, but also like he's doing this online coaching thing and I'm a personal trainer and I'm barely skating by. So it wasn't, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, right. But I was inspired by him mostly actually to try to become more of a fitness influencer, which fell flat on its face. And I learned that growing a business is way more, uh, uh, has way more longevity to it than being an influencer. Uh, but that's what, at least from my perspective, that's what it was when I first got into the scene was grow a big Instagram following, grow the YouTube following and really try to blow up your, your following. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think that that's still kind of like the narrative that people believe. I mean, I know for me personally, that's where I started off was like, well, if I can get, you know, 20, 30, 50,000 followers, then I'll have people just, you know, at my feet ready to be my clients. Right. <laughs> but yeah. you've gone to, sh you've gone to show just like how you said, like, I mean, you're, the CEO of this company has been very, very successful over the you know last handful of years and continues to grow. And like you said, you have 8,000 followers on, on Instagram or on these different platforms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, long story short, I learned that skills are going to be more powerful than a following. I mean, who even knows how long Instagram is going to be a thing or Facebook or any of these platforms, right? But if I learn how to sell, if I learn how to market, if I learn how to lead my team, you know, that can carry me into any venture that I want to create. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the the cool part about it too is like having that skill and being your own person, really being personable, really understanding who you are and your core values really allow you to continue to, uh, you know, provide that value for people and people know exactly what you're about. So then on any platform, it doesn't matter. They know you. And so they're focused on that, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I'm, I'm grateful that I learned that in the beginning. Like I said, I wasted about two and a half years trying to grow the following and, and did it right. rather than unsuccessfully. Uh, but I had mentors say like, hey, like, let's learn the skills, let's grow the business and, and you'll be grateful that you did. Yeah. And that's definitely one of my biggest takeaways from Next Level Coaching Academy is that, you know, I, I didn't do the whole two and a half years. I did about six months of trying to grow it on my own, was struggling, wasn't seeing anything come from it. And then, you know, thankful for my situations kind of pushed me in a direction of, of wanting to have mentorship to really get this thing off the ground. Like I really had no other choice. Like it was either that or I had to go back and find a new job. So, um, you know, that was the, the biggest takeaway from NLCA for me was that, hey, develop the skills, become your own, you know, your own secret sauce. You know what I mean? People are going to love you and that word of mouth of, of you having good client delivery and stuff is going to take more than just having followers. 
let's freaking go i'm glad yeah. i'm glad that you're doing that man that's what i'm that's what i'm here for yeah absolutely no it's a big big very 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 transparent like it was very very open i love that you guys use so much of your your own experience in creating all this stuff so thank you for that yeah i mean one of our com one of our company values is truth first so literally from the sales process to the product we're trying not to hide anything like one thing that's really unique about our sales process is we get you guys on Zoom, we share our screen, we literally show you everything. We show you the course, we show you how this is all going to work. And yeah. uh, just feel like transparency is a good business ethic. So uh, if you're listening out there and you have a business, just try to be more, more transparent. Yeah. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And I definitely, I definitely, it, it definitely resonated with me and got me to obviously join and want to, you know, buy into this and, and, and be part of this. And it's been a blessing ever since. So kind of sticking along with that, like, right, like learning the, the, the going through the, the trials and tribulations, the bumps and bruises of your first couple of years and, and moving into the online space. What do you think has been your biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome to be successful as an entrepreneur or even in the online fitness space in general? Yeah. Yeah. This one comes to mind like immediately. Um, I was not open to receiving help uh, in the beginning. Uh, it didn't have to be two and a half years for me. That's my own demise. I thought I could do it on my own and I wanted to be the self-made entrepreneur. And I thought self-made mean that you just literally do it on yourself and you right. don't get help from anybody else. Um, I was super young when I started. I started when I was 19. So young 19 year old guy, uh, full of testosterone, definitely a little egotistical, uh, but it didn't pan out for me. Um, the breaking moment for me uh, was obviously I was very, I didn't have any success for that two and a half years, but I would say the moment that really broke me was I did invest into one mentor. Um, it was $6,000 for that mentorship at the time. Maybe I was like 2021. 20, I barely had any money. I was doing a little bit of waitering. I was doing a little bit of personal training. Uh, but honestly that was all going back into college. So I, I was pretty much dirt poor, uh, uh, if you guys follow me, you probably have seen the video where I deposit the water bottles into uh, into the water depositing right. machine to get the coins. Uh, that was all to save up for this mentorship. I did a bunch of other odd jobs to get some extra cash as well. Uh, so I put $2,000 down and I financed the remaining $4,000. And I thought that I would be able to get clients to pay off the $4,000. Only got one client during the program and I <laughs> put this client on a $200 a month uh, payment plan. So I really only made 400 bucks in the program. Wow. So I was in debt. What is that? $3,600. And uh, had to use PayPal credit to finance the debt. Couldn't pay PayPal credit back. So I had debt collectors coming after me. But uh, the reason this moment broke me is because uh, when I did the program, I still thought like I wasn't really open to receiving this uh, mentor's advice. I would like hear the advice and kind of do it, but I didn't really go like all in. Um, and at that moment, I realized like, all right, like, you know, you're not that smart, dude. Like you barely made it out. of You barely made it out of college. Like maybe you should actually listen to these people. And the one thing I am good at is I'm a very, very hard worker. So the next mentor, uh, I found a way to make the payments join the mentorship. So whatever this individual tells me to do, I'm going to do. And that's where things really started to take off for me. Yeah. And I think that that's definitely that that experience shaped so much of what you do now, because there's so many things that made me feel comfortable because I'm sure of the experience that you went through where it's like, hey, if you do this and you follow all these like steps, we're going to guarantee that you get this money back. Right. And I'm, I'm sure that that's part of your experience that you don't want people to have that same feeling of like, man, I'm investing into something, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be screwed at the end of this. I'm going to have debt collections coming after me and stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Having the guarantees in place is, is obviously selfishly a really good selling tactic. Right. Uh, but also it's a great tactic for client success a hundred percent because right. it's basically saying, put your money where your mouth is. Obviously you got to believe in yourself and then you got to put in the work just like we have to put in the work as well. You know, we don't want to yeah. have to give you guys the full refund, right? Just yeah. like you want to 3X your, your investment. So I think putting that in place uh, has word as bond and is good yeah. for both parties, the company and the client. Yeah, no, 100%. It gives people that 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 little extra push, right? To be able to go into it and like, okay, like that, that was my fear, right? And I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned from you, which kind of leads into our next question. But one of the things that I learned from you through the modules and everything was that, we're going to have fear regardless, right? Like whether we, we fully buy in and we go after it, we go head on into our fears or we end up running away from it. We have the fear of the negative consequences, right? Of never actually getting this done. 
And I think that was so profound for me and kind of like what you were probably going through too. You invested into this program, but because of your own ego, but also probably a little bit of fear of like actually doing what they say and it failing, right? It being me, it's not, it's not, you know, the program, you kind of like self-sabotaged and didn't really listen a hundred percent, right? Yeah. Fear, anxiety was a bigger one for me than, than okay. fear. Um, but yeah, you're going to be scared regardless. And I literally can like picture me saying that in the module. Cause I know the exact video that you're talking about. You're going to be scared. If you do it, you're going to be scared if you don't do it. Right. And the better question to ask is what consequences would you rather deal with? What problem would you rather have the consequences of being scared because you didn't start and you didn't actualize your full potential or the problems of starting and then continuing to grow and, and, and working through those challenges that are always going to be presented in any growth process, whether it's hitting the gym or it's growing a business. So when I asked myself that question introspectively uh, mm -hmm. and being a growth oriented person, I said, man, I'd rather have the problems of growth. Right. A hundred percent. And that's the same thing that I'm, I'm choosing for myself. It's not a, it's not a, a thing that you just kind of have that conversation once and then you're done with it. Right. It's a daily battle that you kind of have to fight with yourself and continue to make that decision. Uh, but it, it was just really profound to me because I'd never thought really about the alternative, like running away. It seemed like all the fears would go away. Right. Like everything's done. Like I ran away from it. I don't have to worry about it anymore, but you're right. It's like, you, you still have the fear. It's just on the, on the, on the opposite end of the point. It never goes away, man. I mean, and that's that's actually a good thing, right? If you're right. if you're a person who wants to expand, if you're a person that wants to grow, you know, you're constantly going to be uh, discovering new waters. You're constantly going to be discovering new land. So you're always going to be anxious. You're always going to have a little bit of fear. You're always going to have a little bit of doubt. And if you don't, that should be an indication that you maybe aren't heading in the right direction. So uh, right. honestly, I changed my perspective on anxiety, fear, doubt, all that stuff, and. For me, it's an indicator that I'm heading on the right path. And if I'm right. not experiencing that, then there's a problem. Yeah. And one of the big things that I heard from someone along the road, it was like when I was a younger as a kid, but one of the things that I've always done with anxiety and kind of like that, that anxiousness, right? Of just being like, uh, I don't, I don't really know how to feel about this. If someone told me they were like, your brain is really bad at differentiating between excitement and anxiousness. So just every time you feel that, just tell yourself you're excited like tell yourself that you care, right? And that's kind of going along with what you're saying. You care, you're excited about this, you're anxious about this. It, it's because you're going in the right direction. You're doing something exciting and new. Yeah, it's a signal from your body, from your soul, from your con from your subconsciousness, however you want to label it or define it. It's a, it's a signal saying like, hey, you're either heading in the right direction. Sometimes anxiety is going to tell you you're heading in the wrong direction. But I believe that us as humans are intuitive enough to be able to separate the two, whether it's excitement or like, oh shit, this is actually bad for me. But yeah. if we can have anxiety, I don't know, man. I, I just think anxiety is good now. I don't think it's bad anymore. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. But that, you know, that all goes into the mindset, right? Is your perception of it, how you choose to label it and define it in your head, right? And that's kind of been, you know, going along with the question that we had about your biggest obstacle. My biggest obstacle for sure has been the mindset, just continuing to be committed, continuing to stay dedicated, continuing to believe in myself and, and, and have that confidence in what I bring to the table, right? So it might have already been kind of what you said, but do you feel like there's anything else that's been able to allow you to stay so resilient other than just kind of the things you were talking about? Um, coming back to fear for a second, uh, regret is a big terrifier for me. Like I always ask myself and I always actually pose this question to our team as well as like, what would your 80 year old self think? Or what would your 90 year old self think? Or another one that's been powerful for me lately is, uh, what would your future kids think? I want, um, mm. I'm married in about four weeks. Uh, and we want to have our own little family. Thank you. Uh, we want to have our own little family. So I've been thinking a lot more about fatherhood and, and what type of father I want to be and what type of example I want to set. And that comes back to my professional life. Like, you know, if my kid was in this scenario, what would, what would I do? Um, and how would I want them to view me as well? Right. Absolutely. No, I, I think that that's huge. And that's one of the big things for me as well. I am a father. I have three kids and, uh, you know, having the, the, the I, have, I have a 17 year old and then I have a five year old and a two year old. So kind of a big gap, but the five and the two year old, right. Cause they obviously are young during this whole journey that I'm going through here. Uh, that's a big thing for me. It's like my, what I do on a daily basis, what I normalize, what I make a, a, a standard, right. That they're going to do is what they're going to just grow up kind of just being like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. My dad worked hard. He was always, you know, doing his stuff, but he also cared for us. He gave this balance, that balance, like the things that we do as parents are going to 
really rub off onto our kids and really define what they do in the future. Yeah, I think for me, uh, the, the original question was like, what essentially like what motivates me, right? Like what helps right. me push through, push through challenges. Um, yeah, for me, I'm very introspective on like, what do I want my, the story of my life to be? And uh, that really awesome. helps me here. This is the best way to say it. A lot of people say you need to, a lot of people need, say you need to be present. And I think if you're always present, you won't actually create the life that you want. So I try to put myself a lot of times into the future and look back on the present to guide my current decisions or challenges that are in front of me. I like that. I, I really do like that. I hadn't heard about like worded that way before, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But, um, you know, being present, but kind of being present in, in, in a future oriented way, right? Being in the moment and understanding the value of what we're doing now, but in a sense of how is that going to lead me to where I want to yeah. be down the road? Yeah, man, this is actually, I'm glad we're having this conversation. I bought a, um, on Amazon, there's like this life chart and basically okay. it's 85 rows down, 52 columns across the 52 equals 52 weeks of the year, the right. 85 equals 85 years of life. And every week you have to cross off a, a bubble. And when you look at your life in this perspective, and I've lived 28 of these, uh, of these rows now. And it shows the 85, even 28. I'm like, holy crap, like I've already lived so much life and like there's not that much left on the chart. So yeah. it really puts things into perspective. And uh, actually an NLCA client told me about this chart. But if you just type in like life chart on Amazon, um, this is one of the things that's been really helpful for me, just like seeing how precious yeah. time in life really is. That That's really, really cool. I, I hadn't heard about that, honestly, but I could see that where now you're kind of, visualizing how much more time you have on this chart right and yeah. you know we honestly a lot of us would be lucky to be able to live to 85 right so like it could be even less than that unfortunately um so it, it really does put things into perspective for sure morbid but true <laughs> <laughs> right right it's the part that we don't really want to think about but hey you know what sometimes we need to un you know kind of pull behind the curtain to be able to continue to have that motivation and inspire us to keep going forward right and you know with that one of the big things that I've been able to take away from our interactions, which I kind of made a joke about when I was writing this, was that it's mostly been via recordings. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like I know you so much from these recordings. But from our interactions with your leadership, right? And, and, and I'm sure that's a big thing that you want to be able to, you know, captivate with your kids and, and everything. But as far as being an entrepreneur and having your own business, what does leadership mean to you? And how exactly do you try to portray this with the people that you bring into your business and that you work with? Yeah, I'll tell you what it doesn't mean to me anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> I used to think, and I still think a lot of other people think this, that leadership is the Hollywood depiction where like perfect, the perfect example would be like Wolf of Wall Street, right? Where uh, it's loud, it's boisterous, it's like yelling into a microphone, getting everybody all jazzed up. I used to think that was leadership, but it, it definitely is not. I don't think leadership has to be this dictator style. You're commanding a room, yelling at people, really controlling how things are done. Uh, I actually think it's quite the opposite. I would say that I'm not a super loud, boisterous individual. I actually consider myself a little bit of an introvert, to be honest. But I do think that really good leadership is you know who you are, you know who you stand for, you have your core values, you get your team bought into your core values. And the way that you do that is through service and leading through service. Through service. I say this a lot, and I literally just said this to a master coach student today. Um, my staff members, I'm there for them. They're not, they're not here for me. And, and what I mean by that is I'm, I'm here to set them up for success. How can I advance them in their careers? Which if we are talking selfishly, if they advance in their careers and they work for me, heck, I'm advancing my career as well, right? right. But that's been my change in, in my leadership style. Um, I used to think it was the Hollywood depiction. Uh, I got a lot of negative feedback on like, I'm too overbearing, this, that, the other thing. And okay. uh, I've, I've bought a lot of leadership courses and learned from a lot of other people. And uh, service is the only way to do it. I'm, I'm there for them. They're not there. They're, it's not the other way around. They're not here for me. Or, yeah, I'm there for them. They're not here for me. <laughs> no, I hear you loud and clear. And honestly, it, it's cool that you said that because I feel like that's my exact leadership style too. Like with my clients and everything, I tell them constantly, like, I am not this title training and in, in, in the program like you guys are and me being able to be there and, and service you and make sure that you guys get the results that you want is the ultimate goal here right it's not about doing this that and the other and just advancing myself it's about making sure you guys are able to advance and then as a family we all move forward together 
right? And that's the way to really, really win. And I agree with you. I mean, it's kind of funny that you said that you're an introvert, or you look or at least to an extent. Um, I wouldn't guess that about you based off of you know how you talk and your content and everything. But I do feel like I'm I'm an extrovert, but I also lead in the same way. I, I'm not someone who's going to be like a drill sergeant and be yelling at my clients and be in their face and holding them to a crazy standard. I mean, title training stands for turn one day into a lifestyle. And I really try to encompass the whole human being in that and make sure that I account for all of that when I provide the service. Yeah, dude, that's freaking awesome. What I, what I hear, and I think another just like simple way to communicate leadership is you need to have a mission statement and the mission statement defines why are we here? And then right. you need to have company tenants, which is how do we behave? And if you have those two North stars, it makes leadership very easy from a decision-making standpoint, because you could just say like, all right, does this decision align with our mission statement? Is it moving us closer to that? And is this behavior aligned with our company values? And if the answer is no, you don't do it. And if the answer is yes, you do it. Right. No, absolutely. And that goes along with knowing who you are, right? Knowing your core values, because those things have to be hand in hand. You can't have a mission statement and core tenets of your company that just go against who you are as an individual, right? Like you'll be in constant conflict. So I think that was one of the cool things for me creating my mission statement and my, and my company tenets was that I really got to have an introspective kind of moment with myself and like, what, what is, what do these things for me mean for me? What does life mean for me? What has this fitness journey been for me? And how do I want to be able to portray that for my clients and allow them to be able to really adopt these habits as well and these, these core values? Yeah. I just think it's a really strong, simple way to put leadership because for me, everything is like, what's the lens that I'm making decisions through and just having those two things clearly defined has been very helpful. Yeah, absolutely. No, I hear you loud and clear. And so I mean, that I, I love your leadership style that, that I've been able to see with, with Next Level Coaching Academy. I love everything that you bring to the table and, and the way that you present yourself and stuff like that. And my wife even jokes when I do the, these podcasts, she's like, I feel like I hear Chad like <laughs> talking because, you know, she's heard you so many times in the background. But <laughs> you, <laughs> obviously, you've accomplished so much in a short amount of time in life. I know that you kind of when you're looking at your, your life plan, maybe it's a little bit different kind of seeing those 28 years marked off, but you've accomplished a lot in a short amount of time in your life. What do you feel like one is your biggest accomplishment thus far? And what's the biggest accomplishment that you hope when you get to that point when you're 80 years old and you're looking back on things that, that you have under your belt? Man, that's a strong question. Very strong. Yeah, I gotta, question. I gotta hit you right in the gut with one. You know what I mean? Get you, catch you off guard. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, I'll say something about myself. I uh, something that I don't think I'm great at. I'm not gonna say I suck at it because that's negative self talk. I could be better at uh, self reflecting from the standpoint of accomplishment. I feel like I am very much the type of person of like you know what's next, what's next, what's next, and mm -hmm. and push for that. Um, but yeah, I'm. I'm proud of, of what we created. I'm proud mostly of what we stand for. I think something that sets NLCA apart from a lot of people in my immediate industry and then at the business space at large is some of the stuff that you've pointed out on this call. Uh, we do have really good morals. We do have really good ethics. Uh, we know what we stand for and we stand very true for that. And that's something that I would say more and more each day, I'm becoming prouder and prouder of. Obviously, we have the financial success, the certain number of students. That's all great and dandy. Yeah. Um, but I think the way we go about business is something that I'm very, very proud of. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I and I I would I would definitely agree with that because I mean, you guys do like you said have a, a fair amount of students, right? You guys have a lot of people that are in this group, but that never comes across as being a student. It's never like, hey, we're doing our best here. But we have a lot of people and, you know, we're, some of you guys are going to fall through the cracks. Like, obviously, it's about how much work we put into it, right? You're going to get in what you're going to get out what you put in. But at the same time, like, if you're willing to put in the effort, NLCA is going to make sure that you feel one of one, you know, very, very uh, center oriented and make sure that you you have the the, the tools that, that need it to be able to continue to go forward. So I, I would definitely agree with that. How much do you care about noise? <laughs> it's my oh, no, you're fine. Park. <laughs> You're fine. Don't even worry about it. I've you seen probably, Mila on those things like a oh, hundred times. So it's part of the family yeah. at this point, right? You probably, yeah, you probably have heard in my podcast too. I'm like, oh, Kyle, don't cut it out. Cause I, I just, uh, I just don't care that much, but uh, yeah. yeah, let me, she gets too annoying. Um, yeah. I didn't answer the second part of that question, which is right. what to hope to achieve by the uh, age of 80. 
Um, another thing that I would say is becoming more prevalent to me, especially I would say as of lately, like in the last three months is some of the stuff that we've already been talking about, the leading by example. Uh, and that's, that's the biggest thing, man. But by the time I'm 80, I want to say that I've left a really good example, not only for my immediate family, my staff members, the clients, but, um, hopefully I can make a, a, a sizable enough impact on the world to, uh, embody some of the character traits that I believe in. And hopefully that leaves a small mark on, uh, what I am currently viewing as not a super positive world and a world that can always continue to improve. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. I think that you're definitely doing that, man. Like just to give you your kudos, like you, you've made a huge impact on my life as an individual and obviously as, as you know, your whole team. Right. And I know that that's true for so many of the clients and even people that I know that aren't clients, right. People that I've talked to that just follow you guys that are online fitness coaches. And they're like, man, I got so much value from this. I just, maybe it's not the time for me or whatever that their, their reasoning is, but you, you guys are providing a lot of value and definitely doing that. And it, it just seems more and more clear as we continue to talk that we have very similar like ideas about life. And one of the biggest things for me that got me to really move into this space was when I was a kid, I remember my dad used to work a lot on Saturdays. That was like his thing. He would have to go in a lot when he was younger, right? Not so much now, but when he was younger and I would see him putting on his tie and stuff and going into work. And I was like, it's, it's Saturday, dad, like we got the day off. Come on. And he was like, no, I got to go into work. Like I got to be able to do this. And one of the things that it left an impression on me on obviously is his work ethic and stuff. Right. But at the other hand was like, I want to make sure that I have such an impact on the world and that I can help so many people that I can help people not have to go through this where they're stuck to someone else's time, right? That they can be able to go out here and do things and live on their own schedule and have their own sense of purpose and their own sense of, 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 of focus on life and, and things of that nature. So uh, obviously that's huge for you, right? And it, it seems like that with your company, but um, you know, it, it's just funny how two different people, two different lives can have very similar outlooks. <laughs> Let's freaking go, man. Let's freaking go. A friendship is being formed. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I love it. So the last one that I'll end you off with here, Chad, before we go off is what's next for you, man? Like, obviously, we talked about, you know, four weeks from from being married, right? Congrats again. Uh, but what, what, are, what are things looking like for you personally, family, business, you know, all the above? Yeah, I'm excited to be a married man. Um, honestly, I was uh, that was something I was scared of at a certain point in my life. Uh, it was becoming a married man, but I'm very excited to become a married man. It's, it shows commitment uh, and it shows a lot of, once again, morals and ethics and beliefs that I have for my personal self. So that's probably that's the thing fun. I'm most excited about in my personal life. Um, the other thing I'm most excited about in my personal life is uh, just continuing to spend more time with my parents. Why? I have both of them here, which is which is something that I definitely don't take for granted every single day. Um, professionally, we got a lot of cool stuff on the table. We're trying to expand our product suite inside of NLCA. Obviously, we have the 10K Accelerator Program. We have the Master Coach Program. Um, we're looking to create something that's within the coaching space, but not necessarily just for entrepreneurs. Um, it's called the Assistant Coach Academy. It's to help people become assistant coaches. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, and one other really cool thing, actually a couple of cool things we're working on professionally. One is a AI software for lead generation. Uh, we finally found the development company. Here comes Milo. We finally found the development company that's going to create it. So that project about the launch, uh, which I think will be a game changer for NLCA students and coaches at large. And I'd say the last big thing, man, that I'm excited about professionally is um, we kind of have this four phase process laid out. And the final step in the process is expanding uh, all the skills and knowledge that we've learned, uh, not just to fitness coaches, but expanding it to all coaches, mindset coaches, uh, relationship coaches, any type of coach who uh, has their own online coaching company. So we got some cool stuff on the table that I'm excited to roll out. Yeah, no, I mean, all those sound awesome. I really like the last one. I think that that's cool to be able to kind of break out a little bit more. And so much of your stuff is mindset, right? And being able to focus on your relationship with yourself and others and being able to understand yourself mentally as far as like what you want to be able to accomplish and what your goals are and things like that. So I think that that would be a huge help for a lot of people that aren't necessarily fitness coaches, but coaches in general. Yeah, we got some time for that one. We got some time yeah. for that that one. But uh, I would say that's in the, the two-year plan. Awesome. No, I love it. I really do appreciate your time, Chad. I know you're a busy individual and have so much on your plate, but I do appreciate you making this time. Uh, why don't you just let people know where they can find you and we can get that uh, 8K up to 10K? 
<laughs> <laughs> the goal, I think, I think I'm on the path to hit 10K by the end of the year. But uh Instagram is the underscore fit CEO. Uh I'm most honestly, I've been very active on a lot of platforms lately, but I would say that's probably the go-to one. Uh, if you want to check out my pack podcast, it's the fit CEO podcast by Chad Molyneux. That's on all podcast channels. Um I would say those are the the two best places to check out my stuff. Absolutely. No, I appreciate your time, Chad. You've been a great inspiration for me. You continue to inspire me and motivate me on a daily basis. You do so much for the online fitness community as a whole. And honestly, it's been great to get to know you a little bit more, be able to chat a little bit. And I look forward to being able to do things like this with you in the future. Dude, this has been a pleasure. I'm grateful for you having me on. Absolutely, Chad. Thank you so much again. Everybody out there, go ahead and subscribe to the Fit Life for Busy Parents podcast. Make sure that you don't miss any episodes like this with amazing people just as Chad was on this uh, on this episode today. So thank you again, Chad. Have an amazing rest of your day, guys. And we'll be back for episode five next week.